Every single OBS script that I am showing you today was directly requested by a viewer in the comments. I have shown a lot of OBS scripts and plugins and things like that on the channel, and every single video, a lot of you comment with features that you wish were part of OBS Studio or that there were plugins for, and I made sure that every single script in this list directly corresponded with the comment that I have seen in the comment section. First and foremost, we're looking at Source Visibility Mirror. This allows you to toggle the visibility of a specific source based on the visibility of another source. This is super simple, but incredibly clutch if you're trying to build dynamic layouts, where if you want to hide a specific media source or a webcam or something like that, the two sources or multiple sources will go off on the same time. Now, this is especially useful if you're trying to do, say, multi-action workflows where there's kind of a delay sometimes between toggling multiple sources back to back. It doesn't apply at the same time. This allows you to toggle everything at the same time. It also means that if you turn off something in another scene, it can turn off something in this scene, which is really handy if you're doing certain lower thirds, like your song list, for example. If you want to, if you hide your music source, it'll turn off your now playing lower third or something like that. Super freaking clutch. To go along with the first one, we have Toggle Source Visibility. This is a really powerful script that is inspired by the Visibility Timer script. This gives you a script that allows you to control the visibility of a source within a scene on a timer, but it allows you to do so just kind of like independently of other scenes and to do so on a repeating basis. So this allows you to kind of create your own version of Nerd or Die's little lower third, the social media pop-ups to where you could have a graphic, a merch ad, a lower third, a nameplate, a little thing that shows up and just indicates when, you know, what song is playing, show up for 10, 20, 30 seconds, a minute, disappear for, you get to set how long it's shown, how long it hides, and then how many times it repeats throughout the stream. And that's really powerful because you really get to anim you know, automate your animated alerts, you know, your lower thirds, not your alerts, but you know, your lower thirds, your graphics, your pop-ups, those kinds of things on your own timer without needing anything else. This one's really cool. In fact, I, I felt like I undersold how important this is when I recorded the first take of this. So this is a re-recording of it because, oh my goodness, I this is becoming a core part of my stream right now. Next up is yet another stab at the attempt of giving you markers for your recordings and for your streams for you to go back and find highlights. Now, Twitch specifically supports a, a, a marker that you can add to your stream VOD or, and then go back to create highlights or clips from later, but that's only specific to Twitch and you need to sign in with Twitch or whatever. The local stream marker script is completely platform agnostic. It doesn't matter if you're on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. It will save all of the markers you press based on a hotkey to a CSV file. It'll include when you started streaming, the current time, the time code within that stream that the marker was made, when you started recording, if you recorded separate from when you streamed. So it includes all that information so you can most easily find the clips that you want to use, which is going to save either your life or your editor's life a lot of time when you're trying to edit stream highlights. That's one of the things I have always struggled the most with in my career is when I am doing big multi-hour recordings or stream sessions and I'm trying to create highlights or clips from that and I just can't, you know, go through hours upon hours of footage to find clips. I just don't have the attention span and I just choose the worst clips. This helps make that a lot easier. Now, I would still love a plugin or a script that could embed actual markers in the video file that was readable in Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve. But from what I can tell, those markers aren't even interchangeable and they're just stored in some sort of cache anyway, not in the file itself. And so I don't really know that it's possible. Perhaps some sort of XML file that attach, you know, that's a side card with the video that perhaps Resolve can interpret and apply markers to. I don't even know if that's a thing. All right, these last two scripts are my favorite of the video. First and foremost, we have Media Switch Scene. This is a super simple script that you just select a media file within it, and as soon as that media file stops playing, regardless of where it is, although it's most likely going to be playing in the current scene, it will switch your scene to another scene. This is incredibly useful if you want to set up custom Be Right Back clips, where you have, you know, a, a, a media source playing with some highlight clips or something like that, and then as soon as it finishes playing, it switches scenes for you. And from what I tested using some local gameplay files and things like that, as long as you have the, you know, a fast cut transition, it will be instant, like, you don't even see the source go away before it switches scenes. However, if you're using fade or a stinger transition that takes a minute to come on the screen, you will see whatever's behind it or just a black screen whenever that media source goes off. And that is going to be a problem for a couple people. There's no real way to change that without like setting, like maybe the script could offer a predefined buffer. So you can be like, all right, three seconds or like a second before the media clip ends, press it. But I think it 
it operates by detecting when the media source ends, so I don't know that that's even, that's even possible. But regardless, it's really handy for setting up tr automated scenes. Like this, uh, that's one of the cool things, especially when you're trying to do more engaging be right back screens or starting soon screens, is to have something automatically fire off. Even if you go from like a highlights clip to a more standard be right back animation or whatever, having that dynamically change for you is really cool. Now, the workaround for this, of course, is to just have that below the media source and the media source just hides and it shows it, but if you have different things that you want to do at the same time or you're transitioning between different types of scenes or you just want to have it automatically, like, you know, you want a minute to take a drink and you just want a video clip to play and then automatically shoot back to you, I wish I had found the script like three years ago. I'm going to be using it all the time now. Lastly, but not least, we have OBS Rec Rename, which renames the recordings of whatever you're recording in OBS based on the name of the foreground window. This is further building towards, I'm still gonna have a video coming on it, but further building towards that dream workflow of effectively having a shadow play replacement within OBS Studio, where it will, you know, you can be recording a specific game and theoretically it's gonna change the name of that recording based on the game. So if you record a whole bunch back to back, you don't have to sit there and sort through it and try to figure out which clip is which, which is something I really struggle with. Now, I don't entirely know how it will handle if you have multiple applications switching in the foreground, so it's not gonna be perfect, but it could help make the difference of a, a, an extra little bit of time spent sorting versus at least some indicator of what the heck you recorded. Because I my recording drive goes back to 2020 at this point, and I don't know what most of the clips are. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Learning about console mods and OBS scripts is great, but what if you want to take your content to the next level or establish your business? My good friend Alex over at Low Spec Gamer has an entire course dedicated to high spec content on a low spec budget, which I love the title by the way, with Nebula Classes. Yes, our creator owned video streaming site now offers full length classes and Nebula Talks with guest lectures. New classes are added every week. It's a brand new part of Nebula available for just $80 per year at nebulaclasses.com slash evosvox. If you're already subscribed to Nebula with our Curiosity Stream bundle, uh, so you see all of my exclusive content and all of that, then it's only a $5 upgrade, which is pretty baller. You get lots of educational content in an ad-free, higher quality format, plus top creators sharing their knowledge and experience in classes. Sign up today. I know these aren't the usual, like, we're gonna take your stream to the next level and shazam, you got all these crazy on-screen elements. I know a lot of these script videos tend to be the, the more flashy variety, and these are kind of more behind the scenes, little nuanced things, but like I said, these are things that I see requests for all the time in the comments, and it's very exciting to see when someone actually makes features that someone wants for OBS. That's what I love about OBS's, you know, open plugin and script ecosystem, is that anyone can jump in and make the tools that everyone needs. And that's freaking awesome. So I hope you found some of these useful. Let me know what your favorites are in the comments below. Send me your requests over on Discord. And remember, be kind. Rewind.